I'm just thinking of um, challenges that we have. Like one is when we want to make a change to a CDK 4-6 inhibitor. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I I tell my nurse, you know, what we what we need to do. Of course, it's it's entered. We get the pre-authorization and everything. Mm -hmm. Everything's good. Mm -hmm. And then we expect it to get you know mailed mm -hmm. to the patient from the specialty pharmacy. Mm -hmm. And um, some of our patients are reluctant to bother the doctor's office, mm -hmm. so it doesn't come. And then they come back to clinic four weeks later, or two weeks later, you know, to get their checkup. They right. come because yeah. they had an appointment, yeah. but they hadn't started the medication. Exactly. Yeah. That is um, very very difficult. It happens with some of our our folks that just kind of like have too many doctor's appointments, or just or maybe elderly don't have the help at home, didn't have the second set of ears, and the um, and and just um, people that are just reluctant to call the doctor's office, you know. Yeah. Um, but having um, uh, being able to get it right there in the um, in, in the in the practice, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, mitigates that, of course, you yeah, know? Yeah, of course. If you have systems in place to, to manage that, it should mitigate it. But what you described is uh, prevalent across the country. Uh, most practices can only keep uh, a certain percentage, maybe 50%, 40%, 60% of their prescriptions that are, that are prescribed internally at, within their practice. Uh, and the majority, uh, so to speak, need to go out to specialty pharmacy. And the practice does lose, can lose a line of sight of that prescription and can diminish the continuity of care. So one of our emphasis within ENCODA is trying to shore that up. Um, it's certainly one of the uh, COPE quality standards uh, from ASCO. If you're a COPE certified practice, um, being able to um, have that line of sight on a prescription that leaves the hmm. practice that goes to specialty pharmacy. Hmm. Um, hmm. There's a requirement. It's, hard to do. it's hmm. very hard to do. Mm -hmm. It takes effort. There's some best practices that we've shared across our network to help uh, practices get better at it uh, because it's the best thing to do for patients. Right. Because that situation does occur where it's they that. show up and they haven't received it. Um, you know, our practices can do it better. No doubt about yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, you just cut that. That's one less thing you got to track if it doesn't go outside. You exactly. know, there's a third party in there. You know, it's just much easier to keep it in house, basically, just from the practicality of getting it in the first place. Exactly. You know, the next thing is the um, the fifteen thousand dollar box that sits in your closet because it's the wrong dose. Yeah. So you know, you see the to see the patient back and. They've got grade three or four neutropenia, mm -hmm. and you have to make a dose reduction, right. like on palbociclib or ribociclib. But yeah. the specialty pharmacy has already sent them their next month's supply, and yes. we can't send it back. Right. You know, and so then we have to make a dose adjustment, and we have to resubmit the um, prescription, right. and then it takes a it takes a little while. You know, not long, but a few days to get to the patient. You know, right. but that's another possibility of another delay, possibly, because yeah. anything can happen. You know. Um, and so then there's just a lot of um, waste, but also the patient has paid another copay, yeah. you know, for that as well, you know. Right. And it's it's that's that's frustrating. That that's really super wasteful. A lot of docs don't like that, you yeah. know, at all. See, that's one of the advantages of ribocyclin because you can each pill is 200 milligrams, right. so you can go down from 600 to 400 mm -hmm. without wasting. Right. So that's very important, actually. But again. How does this work with the medically integrated? How, how can you guys help with, with that? Yeah, so we developed, as I mentioned before, uh, a quality standards, and there's four domains of the quality standards. One is foundational, and in the foundational quality standard, it talks about cost avoidance and waste. And one thing that a medically integrated pharmacy team needs to do or work towards is minimizing the cost associated with errant fills. And they can occur in two different ways. One would be if it's if you're able to fill that prescription at your practice um, to ensure that when um, to to look within the EMR to see how the patient's doing and not to automatically refill a prescription uh, with the same strength, the same um, uh, quantity, unless you get verbal okay from the physician, the prescriber, and also the patient to make sure that they can afford it and the, and the prescriber still wants to prescribe that. And if there's any differences, then you make adjustments to minimize any of that waste. And it's a timing issue and it takes effort. 
and it really it takes resources. It takes resources, and and so when you have that medically integrated team, and you have commitment from senior leaders within your practice to devote time, energy, and effort to that, it can be done very well. And we track that, and I say we, and CODA as an organization tracks the cost avoidance that practices have taken out of the system by eliminating errant fills. Because as you described it, based on a timing, if a patient is to receive the therapy today, that has already, if it was on refill, it had already been sent five days ago so that it gets there hopefully in time for the patient, which doesn't always happen. But um, in, in that five day span, a dose adjustment may have been needed, uh, 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 a change of therapy or a, a, a delay in therapy or a holiday may be required. And if we have control of that prescription at, the, at our practice, then that errant fill never happens. And so we track that on our website. We've got millions of dollars that we've saved healthcare providers and employers um, by being proactive and being medically integrated. Um, the other situation is when it goes out to specialty pharmacy and trying to build in an infrastructure to try to prevent that errant fill. Now that's more difficult based on time fences, right, and milestones, uh, because the specialty pharmacy needs to mail out a prescription a week or so in front of that. And so we try to mitigate that as best we can, but inherently, again, as you mentioned, um, because it's not in-house, it's more challenging to, to, to prevent that waste. Um, and so we, like I said, we have metrics around that and we have sharing of best practices on how to do that well. Yeah, it's really incredible when I think about it because the pharmacist or nurse navigator can look at the EMR and even look at phone calls in that mm -hmm. have been documented mm -hmm. about, about toxicity. Mm -hmm. They can see if there's been a um, hold. So that's important because they say, oh, I better not fill, the, I better wait until the patient sees the physician to see if there's a um, right. dose adjustment or give the doc a heads up, you know, hey, this, hey, we're gonna let you know here, we're gonna take a look at this. You might need a dose adjustment here. We love the, we love the help.